TNA Slammiversary 2011, the ninth anniversary of Slammiversary. Hooray, my first ever TNA pay-per-view review. So the entire arena, not set up at all. The only thing that has set up as Slammiversary is the Titan Tron. Besides that, everything looks completely normal. It looks like a completely normal episode of Impact, with the exception of the lighting and the Titan Tron that says Slammiversary. The opening match was Beer Guns taking on the British Invasion. Now the match itself, not really a bad match. It was pretty good. wasn't exactly a five star match or anything. It wasn't. It was good. And um, Beer Guns pulled out some of the same stuff they did on the last episode of Impact. wasn't exactly one of the greatest matches of all time, but it was a pretty good tag team match for what it was. Probably give it like three, three and a half stars. Why not? In the end, the Beer Guns retained the Tag Team Championships by pinning the British Invasion after like 50 different false endings. Now during this pay-per-view I was wondering, where is that hot red-headed chick that's always in the front row? Where the, where has she been? And then I think I've seen her. Is that her? Is that freaking her, the one that's seen her over there? Gee, no wonder the cameraman zooming in so close. The next match was Scott Steiner versus Matt Morgan in a pretty okay big man match. I mean, pretty much just... Your typical big man match. Power moves. There was a lot of mat wrestling. A lot of striking involved. Wasn't a whole lot to talk about. Just your typical big man move. So in the end, Matt Morgan gets the well-deserved pinfall over Scott Steiner. Great that Scott Steiner's putting him over. The next match was in X Division 3-way. Abyss taking on Kazarian. Taking on Brian Kendrick. Wow. This match was a real bot fest. Seriously, Brian Kendrick could not hit a single kick. All his kicks were directly to the arm. This whole match was pretty much just completely sloppy, botchy, and just completely really not all that good. I mean, there were some okay stuff in there, but all the botches kind of distracted from the goodness of this actual match. In the end, Abyss would end up retaining the X Division Championship. The only thing I could think about during this match, though, was... Why didn't Brian Kendrick and Kazarian go in with the game plan of, Hey dude, let you pin me, that way, you know, we could keep the X Division within the X Division. Seriously, why didn't they just do that instead of go through all the trouble and letting Abyss have a chance? Just me thinking. Samoa Joe versus Crimson. This match, really, really boring. Just in my opinion. I don't know what you guys thought about it, but in my opinion, it was like a really boring match. A lot of mat wrestling, a lot of, you know, bit slapping and fighting going on in there. Not a really good match, just in my opinion. I was not into this. I was bored throughout the entire match. There weren't a whole lot of highlights. It was an anticlimactic match, and it had an anticlimactic finish with Crimson picking up the victory. The Knockouts Championship match, Angelina taking on Mickey Jane for the Knockouts Championship, and Angelina apparently dropped her zombie gimmick, so no more zombie Angelina anymore. It's just back to being the normal Angelina. Apparently she's just a heel that loves winter now. They got rid of her makeup, got rid of her zombie gimmick, so she's just normal now. So Angelina taking on Mickey James, and the first minutes of this match, first five, ten minutes of this match, uh, not that good. Not a very good first few minutes, but started to pick up towards the last five minutes before the match ended. So, in the end, it didn't turn out to be a bad match. Winter definitely got involved, trying to get involved a lot. And with a trend in the show, there was like 50 false endings at the end. But Mickey James retains the championship, gets beat up by Winter and Angelina at the end. So, it looks like this feud's going to continue. And then it was the match that's not the main event. Seriously, this is not the main event. Sting, the, your World Championship match, Sting versus Mr. Kennedy was not the main event match. Are you fudging kidding me? What the f Okay, so basically it starts off as a huge brawl in the middle, brawling all over the crowd. Then it starts to get really, really boring. Just submission locks, endless holds. Just up until the ending, Eric Bischoff. Yay, Eric Bischoff on pay-per-view. I thought we were going to go the whole pay-per-view without him. Well, thank God he came out. So Eric Bischoff comes out, gets involved in the match. And while the referee is counting, he makes it sound like it was a three count. So the referee counts one. Eric Bischoff taps the match, make it sound like it was a two count. But it wasn't a two count. So the referee counts a two. And then Sting gets up because he thinks he's won because he's heard a three count. So Sting let go of his pin. Then Mr. Kennedy hits a low blow and then a mic check. And just like that, Mr. Kennedy is a new 
World Heavyweight Champion. The next match, AJ Styles taking on Bully Ray in a last man standing match. Now the match, for the first 10 minutes, boring. For the first 10 minutes it was boring, not a good last man standing match at all. It didn't start to pick up until the last 5-8 minutes when AJ Styles started pulling off a whole bunch of spots. He pulled off, he jumped off the ramp and onto Bubba Ray doing like a flying cross body off the entrance ramp and onto Bubba Ray. He jumped off of the Raptors and did a splash through a table. Bubba Ray gets up. He kicks AJ Styles while he's down, gets up the last second, then falls right back down. Bubba Ray is the winner. And yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be pissed off about this. I mean, where does it go from here? I mean, Bubba Ray pretty much got the actual clean victory. Even though I'm sure it's still going to continue, they're going to have another match. Probably an Elevation X match. Yeah, that's a really good, great match. Why don't we have an Elevation X? And for the Kurt Angle versus Jeff Jarrett match, honestly, I didn't even watch this. As a matter of fact, it's going on while I'm talking about this. But I'm just going to give a sidekick review about this, pretending like I actually watched the match. And we'll see how accurate my sidekick review is. Alright, so basically this match was a back and forth action battle. Kurt Angle pulling out a bunch of good suplex. Jeff Jarrett pulling off his usual heel tactics. It was just a really good back and forth match. This was actually a really good match. Like pretty much a WrestleMania quality match I would say. I mean they definitely showed a lot of work. I mean Kurt Angle, I cannot believe some of the stuff he did in this match. I mean it was just incredible. Overall, really great match. I did not expect to see this kind of match out of him. Kurt Angle picks up the victory and it was an incredible, incredible Incredible match, definitely. So yeah, let me know how accurate that sidekick review was because I didn't even watch it. So if I had to grade it all, six or seven, six or seven for this pay per view. I mean the match in the match endings were all pretty screwy. Either they were screwy and retarded, or they were just weird, or they were anticlimactic. Yeah, really, for a big four pay-per-view, not a lot of good matches on here. Yeah, so six or seven out of ten. Anyway, it's been MTO, it's the MTO, my review, saying yada, 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 blah, 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 the 